Mishmash! Hey ya, today I'm actually accomplishing part of my slogan and we're doing some kit bashing. My last tutorial featured a space marine that you probably all noticed was a little different from the typical Primaris marine. This is mostly due to the fact that I used parts from the M6 Corvus set. I got a lot of people asking me how I did it, so I figured I'd make a little video on kit bashing some brand new space marines. I got my hands on the new Primaris veterans, and these guys are actually pretty sweet. But they're not without their flaws of the very generic and watered down art style that most space marines have today, so I figured I'd fix them up a little bit. Enough talk, let's get into it. There is a lot to like about this set, and I'll go over this more in my review later on. But uh, there's a lot of things that I don't like. This mostly stems from the arms. I think the Primaris arms and the weapons are just too long, and they end up making the miniatures look a lot more goofy than they need to be. I think in the pursuit of making them look more true scale, they look goofier than ever. For the first Marine, I'm using the arms that are used for the Sergeant in the M6 Corvus set. The chest piece for this marine is my favorite in the set, so I didn't want any big lugging weapons to obscure the details. To glue most of these miniatures together I'm using Tommy as cement, as it gives us a little bit of freedom to move the parts around before they completely adhere. The details are very crisp in this set. I'm quite impressed. I chose to use this Chaos Space Marine mace as I really do like blunt weapons, but I'd end up having to trim off some of the details to make it look a little more, I guess, loyalisty. I know, it's lame. I'd end up attaching the other arm, though I'd kind of pose it in a way that he's really using his full body to swing this mace. I then use a plasma pistol for his sidearm. This came from the Mark III kit that was introduced in the Burning of Prospero set, not the new one. After some careful trimming and sanding down, I then attach it using the Tamiya. They look a little chunkier than the updated versions we get in the Corvus set, but I still think they look good. After trimming off the more spiky bits on the mace, I then sand it down to make it look a little bit more rounder and flatter. I'd use some Tamiya to fill in any gaps, and then I'd add the pauldrons onto this miniature. I typically don't do this as I like having the freedom of having them separate, but I kind of wanted this to be a marine that I would use all in one color. You probably noticed that he doesn't have a head, and that's because I didn't know what to give him. There's a lot of noggins in this set, especially bare ones that I was thinking about painting, and anytime I'm painting flesh I think it's a better idea to paint it separate. I'd then trim off a little bit more from the mace, and then I'd glue over one of the nice purity seals, giving it an even more whooshy effect to the weapon. The backpacks were something that I wasn't sure on. I actually don't mind the Primaris backpacks too much, but I wanted to go along with and show some more kit bashing ideas, so this backpack came from that weird Space Marine Adventure set that you could get at Barnes & Noble for some reason. It's pretty cheap for what you're getting, and all the Marines are kinda cannibalized in some way. Good parts. I think this guy looks excellent so far, and I would add just a little bit of glue to the base, just enough that I could pull off the miniature whenever I wanted in case I wanted to use a more elaborate base. I could just pin him, but I don't really want to. <laughs> I then went back to the Corvus set just to use some of the pouches, and I actually don't mind the ones that you get in this kit, but I think these have far more detail, and I think they look really good next to one another. They complement each other well. I then fit it onto the Marine, not gluing it quite yet just to make sure that it would fit properly. This is always a good thing to do beforehand. I then add one of the pouches from the set to the back of the Marine, and I would add the one from the Corvus set directly next to it. I think these two together look really good.
This marine I used some of the arms from the Corvus set and one of the plasma guns from the upgrade kit. I think this overall is where these really shine. Even beyond the creative aspect and how generic all the Primaris marines look, their weapons are my least favorite part. They look way too big and they end up looking like nerf guns. To me anyway, they inadvertently make the resize and the true scale thing look worse than the actual squatted tactical marines. I did feel I was missing out on some of the bigger weapons from this set that I actually did like, so I ended up using the combi bolter flamer thing from the Death Watch set. I just kind of found this in my pile of shame and it fits perfectly onto this marine. But I didn't think he was quite armored up enough, so I ended up using one of the chainsword belt things from the Mark III set. I wish they would do things like this more often. More holstered weapon options would look so much cooler. Being that the pauldron attached to this weapon was a crimson fist symbol, I decided to use the one Mark VII helmet in the set. I wanted to go for a classic, classic space marine. Being that I'm not sure what the rest of these marines are going to be, I decided to take the shoulder pads and mount them onto pieces of Q-tip using a little bit of AK Interactive's putty. I'd then take these little Q-tips and basically porcupine them into a weird little sander thing that I got from a Gundam kit. It's kind of a scuffed way of doing it, but it always works for me and that's what I did for my flesh painting tutorial. And hey, I can still sand stuff while using it. It's dual function. Also, if you clip off parts of the sprue, you can mount heads on for easier painting. I actually directly glue this on using a little bit of Tamiya's cement. Just enough that I can easily break it off. This is where I think these marines really shine through, however. The classic bolt gun looks amazing on this guy. To me, this is what the ideal space marine looks like. Not to nostalgia bait, but it reminds me of when I first started playing Space Marine. Once Titus lands on the surface of the planet, and you get your first bolter, and you just start mowing down orcs. That's what got me into this setting. I know I said I despised the arms in most of the Primaris Marine kits, but I quite like this robotic arm. Being that it's bionic, you could make the argument that it's some sort of Iron Hands upgraded arm, with just a little bit extra reach. I'd then trim off one of the chain sword arms in this kit, leaving just the hand so I could glue it on perfectly. I kind of struggled to place this arm on as I really didn't have a plan for it, and that's one of the biggest things with kit bashing is it really is good to have a plan. This next part is a little dodgy as it's kind of hard to argue that this is a kit bash, but I didn't have any arms that I could find on hand, in time for the video anyway, so I ended up using this 3D printed arm that I had made forever ago. Also, there's totally an option of just 3D printing all these parts instead of getting all these kits, but that's what happens. 3D printing wasn't an option for me five years ago. But the thing is, with 3D printed resin parts, you cannot use Tamiya cement on them, because they're not plastic. So we had to use the old super glue to make this sh** stay in place. I typically don't like using super glue as it's much messier than cement, and on top of it, it's not as maneuverable once you set it in place. Once I was happy with the positioning of the arm, I ended up using a bolter from the Mark IV Space Marine set. This guy is kind of wonky in the way that I designed him, but uh, oh, whoops. Uh, uh, continuing on. This guy's backpack I got from that weird Death Watch Overlord Space Marine hero guy. I don't know where the rest of him is, and it's really rare for me to lose a miniature, so I might have given it to a friend. But I still had the backpack. I wasn't super keen with the huge Inquisition symbol on the back, however, so I started doing this weird convoluted effort to seal it over with green stuff. And as you'll see, I kind of fuddle-pucked with this forever, and then I just decided, hey, there's these huge parchments in the actual Space Marine set, and it fit over it perfectly. So, yeah. Sometimes the best option is the simplistic one. I mostly wanted this backpack because it had a little servo skull guy on it, to be honest. I just like the idea of this goofball yelling commands at him while constantly bobbing up and down. I don't know why I was struggling so hard to make this guy. Like, you can watch me fiddle with him for like 10 years here. But once he finally decided to settle the f*** down, I finally got him to work. And I'm pretty happy with him overall. I might make this guy into a successor chapter of one of the Iron Hands. I don't really like their color schemes, so I'll probably go for one of their successors. 
though, overall, I think this kit is really nice. I just thought I'd give you some ways to really spice these guys up. Some of the backpacks are from the Corvus sets, and some of these guys I just haven't given backpacks yet because I don't know what else to do with them. I want to leave these guys slightly blank just for the ideas that you guys have for future videos. I can hear you guys pretty loud and clear that you want more Space Marine painting tutorials, so I want to use these guys for those future videos. I also ran a poll last night because I wanted to see if you guys would be comfortable with me doing some lore videos in any interim. I love painting, but sometimes it takes a little while to recharge my batteries and I want to keep consistent content for the channel. That isn't to say that I'm going to do a lot of lore videos, and for the people that came here just for painting tutorials, don't worry. I'm not going to do super long videos that'll take up more time than I have to paint miniatures. There will never be a time that I do a lore video over a painting tutorial, so don't worry about that. Overall, what I'm trying to get at is I'm going to be focusing hard on this channel. We're going to be doing a lot of content in the coming weeks, and months, and foreseeable future for that matter. It might be a little naive to say, but with how fast I've been rising up, I'm hoping to make a career out of this. It'll take a while, and there's a lot more work to be done before I get to that point. But I'm going to be focusing a lot more on making videos, and I do want to focus more on proper formula for how I'm going to go about it. It's no secret that my shorts end up taking most of my viewership, which I can't really complain about. It's because of the shorts that I've been able to rise so fast, and those aren't going anywhere. I'm going to be focusing those more towards mini tutorials, and that's probably where the lore will go for the most part. But I think a lot of my energy is going to be dedicated to making better painting tutorials and more videos dedicated to hobby advice. The shorts kind of gobble up a disproportionately large amount of my viewership. And I know it's annoying, but if you liked what you saw, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and share it with a friend. It means a lot, and it would really, really help the channel. I guess the reason I feel as confident as I am right now is I've met some people recently that have really helped me out. There's some pretty huge names in the 40k scene that I've recently come into contact with and made some pretty good friends with. And as a result, this next video will feature a very, very special guest. But enough of my ramblies, it's time to end this video. And I will leave you with a mishmash, kit bash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya!